Hey everyone, Corey from AquariumCoop.com. Today, I wanna to talk about my favorite easy aquarium plants. And the reason why I wanna talk about this is I don't talk about it very often. I spend a lot of time focusing on fish because I love breeding fish, but I also love plants and I've been keeping plants for over 10 years. Uh, I'm a master aquatic horticulturist. I sell them, I have a warehouse full of them. And I've just got certain favorites written down on this list right here that I want to bring to you guys and make it as easy as possible for you to have that, wow, that looks really good, and get the benefits of lesser water changes without breaking the bank and without a ton of frustration. So the first one I've got is, in general, cryptocorns. So cryptocorn when dead I read. Now, that's going to pop up on the screen here. It's a smaller plant. It feeds from the roots. And the easy part about it is, no matter what kind of substrate you have, it will grow in it. We're gonna put some root tabs in there. We're gonna feed it through the gravel so we don't have to dose it all the time. We don't have to get CO2. We don't got any of this crazy stuff. We basically just apply some fertilizer down low, let it grow really slow. It'll grow under almost any light. And when I say almost any, you know, nine out of 10 lights, no problem. Even kit tank lights, but there are some like glowfish lights and things like that, that it might struggle. It'd probably still grow a little bit, but you'd struggle. So almost any light if you can basically if it if your aquarium looks bright and it's not really blue looking you're probably going to grow cryptocorns no problem at all and that's what i love about them i have them in a 75 gallon tank in a in a perfect world i all these beginner plants are pretty much all the ones that i use all the time and when i knew to impress people i'll start injecting co2 and doing crazy stuff but for the most part i'm only here to impress myself and i like almost no maintenance and it looking good the next one i've got the miramo moss ball Super easy, do nothing. So it's a little green ball. It's actually a Clodophora algae. You toss that bad boy in there, and the only maintenance you have to do is give it a little kick. And so every time you're changing water, make sure you roll it a little bit. Otherwise, the bottom of it never sees light and it dies. And uh, great for goldfish and stuff like that that are going to kind of move it around the tank for you. Uh, good for a little betta bowl, anything where you've got very, very, very low light and you're just looking for something to eat a little bit of that waste that's in the water to help fight off some of the other allergies. So this is kind of, we're trading an algae we like to look at to help get rid of algaes we don't like to get to look at. And they're very cheap. I think we sell them for like $3.50. You can get a little army of them. And uh, they're also great. If you're starting a new tank, go grab two or three of them out of an established tank, put them in the new tank, bring over the bacteria. I mean, there's so many good things about them, and they're easy, and they look different. Don't even get me started on cutting them apart and attaching them to wood to make them look like trees. That's super cool, too. Next, we've got the Apontagetan crispus. This is a bulb plant. It's got a little bulb, and it gets these really long fronds. This is one of the main plants that comes out of the betta bulbs and things like that at, at big chain stores. And the reason why they sell them that way is they're so easy to grow. They're kind of add water, will expand type of thing. The bulb itself is its own nutrients. So you don't even have to add fertilizer. You just put that thing in there. And as long as you kind of let it sit on top of the gravel, it's going to sprout and out come the plant. There go down the roots. It lasts for about a year. It'll die back. Leave it in there. After a couple months, it'll come back. Great looking plant. Gets big though, but most people want that. And it grows really fast. Like you might go from a bulb to this big in a week at to that big in two weeks to out of your tank in three weeks it'll flower for you has all those cool things again kind of an easy cheaper plant i think we sell them like six bucks something similar to that and uh nice crinkled leaf to it so adds a little bit of texture too the next one is on everyone's list java moss uh we keep it even a little bit easier than that we've already got it attached to wood it is a little more expensive we sell it at like 18 or 19 bucks we're a little crazy because uh, we already have it on the wood. We can't buy it uh, where it's been grown underwater except for on the wood. So that's why we buy it that way. This is another one of those easy ones. Do almost nothing. It is kind of a magnet for algae though if you do nothing. Um, put it in your aquarium. If you got fish going poop, it'll feed that moss. And if you're really particular about how that moss looks, you might want to invest in some algae eaters and a little bit of fertilizer. But great for breeding fish and in general... Uh, great for a little supplementation for a goldfish and that kind of stuff. Then go pick at it and it works out really well. Another one, kind of like a moss, Siswasser tang. This can go in the lowest of low lights. I think it actually prefers not having a light on the aquarium. It is uh, a little, it's like Pelia. 
It's this little seaweed looking stuff that doesn't really attach to anything. It comes, we sell it on a little mat and uh, it's, it's easy to grow. That's all I can say is like, you put it in there, you'll have it. Like that's, I'm, I'm not sure I've ever seen someone kill it. I don't think I've, I don't think I've ever seen dying uh, tang actually. I believe that I've, I've seen it dried out like out of an aquarium, but I don't think I've ever seen it die. So that should be an testament to how easy that plant is. Not easy to find though. That's the hardest thing. So I think we sell for like 13 bucks and it's not easy to find. We're always on the wait list with the farms, but it is very, very easy and it does look pretty cool. Next up, the Amazon sword, a trademark in the hobby, right? Like, oh man, it's Amazon sword. I've seen those, they get huge. They do, they're very easy to grow. So here's something I want you to remember. We've been growing them for 30 years. Lighting was terrible 30 years ago. So today we can really grow them. All we gotta do is give them fertilizer. They had to eat back then, they still gotta eat now. Jam some root tabs underneath there, more the merrier. They really like to eat, give them a lot of root tabs, and they'll just keep exploding in growth. When you first get it, a lot of times, you'll be getting it as it's been grown out of water. So the leaves will be big and round, and they're gonna come back as a short, not short, uh, but a narrow, long leaf. And it's gonna look like it's dying back, getting yellow. What it's doing is it's sucking out all the nutrients from those leaves that are dying and making the new leaves that are gonna come out. And long term, if you have that going on, it means they don't have enough root tabs. So when you see a little bit of yellowing going on, root tab, root tab, root tabs. Keep giving it root tabs. It'll get happy. It'll become a mother plant. And when it becomes a mother plant, you're going to get this thing coming out. It's going to look like it's going to flower, but that's actually the spike, as it's called. And it's going to make baby plants along it. And you can just pull those off once they grow a little bit of roots and plant them down. And you'll be making baby sword plants. So super cool. A lot of root tabs. I can't stress a lot of root tabs enough. Tons of root tabs and you'll be successful. Low light, easy to do, gets big, easy. The next one is Java Ferns. Kind of like Java Moss, recommended a lot. This one's an easy one. There's only one way to screw this one up. Plant it into the gravel. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to attach it to wood or rock. Find a rock that's got like a crevice, just jam that thing in there. It's got this little root rhizome looking thing and all these leaves coming out of it. If that thing goes under gravel, it'll die. So we just gotta keep it up above the gravel. You could let it wander around your aquarium floating around. Eventually it's gonna grab onto something. It's kinda like ivy. Grabs onto it, locks on, starts growing. Um, if you wanted to do it a favor, give it something like Easy Green or Liquid Fertilizer. Um, it goes a little bit, you know, it doesn't use a lot. So you'd wanna use it in a, you know, very sparingly unless you've got a full plant of tank. But this is a list mostly for your kind of getting into plants. But if you buy all the plants on this list, yes, start dosing full. But if you're like, I'm just gonna buy one Java fern and see how it goes, just make sure you've got some nitrates in your aquarium and it doesn't starve to death. If it starts turning brown on you, getting hungry, yellowing, getting hungry. If it's got these little like, makes like little plants on it, looks like it's got seeds, little plants coming out, it's in distress. What does that mean? That means it, it's stressed out and it goes, I better make babies before I die. And so it just means, hey, I better start feeding it or doing something, otherwise it's gonna die, and make all these little plant babies and they'll get another chance at it. So you get a couple of modes. Uh, one, one special tip there, if you pull a leaf off and let it just kind of float around your aquarium, eventually it'll spawn a bunch of little baby plants. So that's kind of a cool thing too. All right, more cryptocorns, cryptocorn lutea. It is not red, it is kind of a nice slender leaf. And again, just super easy with uh, root tabs, any substrate, no CO2, any light, adds that little variety you're looking for. And I just, you know, if you went to a website and ordered every cryptocorn they had, I don't think you'd be sad. You would be happy, give it like three months from that day, and you'd be like, wow, out of all the plants I ordered, crypts are my favorite. And I just absolutely love them. They are a slow grower, but sure, you know, they're like, they're slow and steady. They're going to win that race and you're going to really fall in love with them because while your other plants are growing gangbusters, these ones will just look good for a long time. Next one is one of the easier stem plants, Bacopa caroliniana. So it's a little stem plant that goes straight up, kind of like a tree, makes these little branches and little round leaves. Now, when you first get it, probably be growing out of water again. So you're gonna have these weird looking leaves and then the top of this thing is gonna start growing different looking leaves and those are gonna die off. 
Well, what's going to happen there is you'll have all this new growth. You'll have this big old stem. It looks like it's a tree trunk missing all the branches. You can cut that off, jam it in the ground. It'll grow roots. That's what it does when it propagates. And uh, give it some liquid fertilizer in there, something like the Easy Green. And it's really easy to grow. If you were unsure, if you think you don't have enough light, just let it float on top. And you'll get all these weird roots growing out of the side of it. But then you can kind of chop that up and plant that and get some really good starts coming up out of your aquarium. And uh, yeah, good beginner stem plant. All right, the last one I've got for you is kind of, uh, I guess, the easiest carpeting plant. And that would be Dwarf Sagittaria. It's kind of like Valisteria. It's just like grass looking stuff that only, well, depends on how much light. If you have really low light, it'll get pretty tall. If you have really high light, it stays really small, and it just keeps sending runners under the gravel, making new ones, and eventually it'll fill in like grass would in your yard. Now, it does help you have uh, a good substrate, a plant substrate makes it easy. Otherwise, a bunch of root tabs and a little bit of liquid fertilizer, it'll get going for you. If you have a tank that's been set up for a few years, and uh, there's a bunch of fish poop in there, plant that thing in there, and it'll probably love that too. Really good substrate is just something that's got a lot of nitrogen in it. So tons of fish poop or something we're going to buy that kind of has tons of fish poop already installed. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed those easy plants. If you need more info, check out the videos popping up on the screen. We've got more beginner plants. We've got top five plants. We've got all kinds of stuff.